This is a Bitax Gamma. It's the most popular, most recognizable desktop Bitcoin miner in the entire world. And people go crazy modifying these things. And so that got me thinking. I got in the Facebook group and I asked a bunch of people, what's the absolute best mod you can possibly get for the Bitax Gamma? Now I got a number of responses, but there were two that were mentioned the most, and it actually stirred up kind of a passionate debate on the topic. Some people said it was the Argon Thermal 60. Some people said it was the Ice Tower Low Profile Plus. And so today, we got both. We got an Argon Thermal 60. We got an Ice Tower Low Profile Plus. We got a knock to a fan. We got a bunch of 3D printed parts. We got this shroud to connect the fan to one of these things, I don't remember which. And so we're gonna figure out, once and for all, what is the best mod for this device? So let's not waste any time. Let's plug this thing in, let's get some baseline numbers, and then let's install each of these to see which one is the winner. Let's do it. So test number one is our baseline test in stock configuration as it comes from Solo Satoshi. Now I have added a few heat sinks to the front and the back of the board, but those are gonna remain on through all three tests, so they really don't make a difference. Now we're gonna pay close attention to two numbers and two numbers only. I'm not concerned with the hash rate, I'm not concerned with the efficiency, I'm only worried about the ASIC temperature and the VR temperature, the voltage regulator temperature. Those are the only thing that matters. And as far as settings go, I'm not going to touch any of that stuff. So the fan speed is going to remain at 100%, the frequency is going to remain the same, which is 675, and the voltage is going to remain at 1250, all three tests. Now currently in stock configuration, you can see that our ASIC temperature is just a little high here, so it's at 70.1 degrees Celsius. We have the high temperature warning, the danger red text that's uh, indicating that we're, we're getting close to the edge there, and you know, we may want to tune it down a little bit, otherwise it will shut itself off automatically. I think it does that when it hits 72 degrees. Uh, but let's say 70 degrees on the ASICs and 75 on the VR in stock configuration with a very mild overclock. Now we'll start in alphabetical order, so we'll go ahead and go with the Argon Thermal 60 first. And we're going to use this fan for both of these tests. So both of these coolers actually come with their own fans, but I want to eliminate any variables that can throw things off. And so to be fair, we will use the same high quality Noctua fan for both of these tests. That way we can see how effective these coolers are at keeping things cool. Now as a second portion of this test, I'll also judge very subjectively which one I think looks the coolest. Because if these things are about the same, where it's like neck and neck as far as performance goes, I'll probably go with the one that looks the best. Even if one performs just slightly worse, I'll probably choose the one that looks the best. So we'll judge that too, and I'll have you weigh in down in the comments which one you think looks the best, but if one is way better than the other, looks don't really matter. So let's tear the Dark Horse heat sink that's currently on the Gamma off. Let's install the Argon Thermal 60 and the Noctua fan, and let's see how she performs. Okay, so here are the competitors. We've got the Ice Tower Low Profile here, we've got the Argon Thermal 60 here. And just right off the bat, I will say this. I will be shocked if this thing outperforms this thing, because just look at the size difference. The Argon Thermal is literally twice the size. Uh, looks cool too. I'm actually a little disappointed I have to take this fan off. But to keep everything fair, we're going to use the Noctua 60mm for both of these. That way we can really judge the performance of the cooler itself and not the fans that are supplied here. Uh, but again, this thing looks like it's going to be the winner. I really don't know. I can't even imagine how this thing would outperform that thing, but who knows? We'll find out. So we'll install this one first, the Argon Thermal 60, and we will get some numbers and we'll see what happens. We will determine which one of these two is the king of Bitax Gamma Mods. Okay, so this fine looking specimen is the Argon Thermal. Now I've got this configured in a pool configuration where it's gonna pull the hot air up and the hell away from this thing, keep it nice and cool. And I also tried this pushing air down through the cooler and I tried to put this thing on the bottom to push air that way. Uh, but for whatever reason, this particular configuration seems to work the best. But I will say this, if I were gonna run the Argon all the time, I'd flip this thing over on its side because I think that looks better, and I'd put a fan on each side to have kind of a push-pull situation going on. But for the sake of fairness, we're gonna run one fan for this test because there's no place to put two fans on the Low Profile Plus. So let's plug this thing in, let's get some numbers, and let's see how she performs. Okay, so this thing overheats every single time. Now, my plan here was to plug it in, let it ramp up at 675, 1250, and let it stabilize a little bit. But before it does that, it just overheats, it throws a power fault, and then it shuts itself down. So, I don't know what to do. I have tried everything. I flipped the fan over, I've had it upside down, I put the fan on the bottom, 
I moved this thing over to the side and I bent this out of the way. That way I could run this thing sideways. That didn't work. Uh, what else did I do? I also added shims. I tried it with no shims. I've tried pretty much everything and it's 675, 1250. It just overheats. So I don't know what the deal is. I don't know if this is a bad cooler. I don't know if this 3D printed socket is no good and for some reason it's just not laying flat. Although I've been very carefully trying to adjust it so it's nice and flat on the chips. We got plenty of thermal paste, but so far this thing is a failure. We're gonna rip this thing off. We're gonna put the low profile on and hopefully get some better results. So now we've got the low profile plus all installed and it looks great. You know, I've called this the ice tower a couple of times. The ice tower is actually a totally different thing, but a lot of people call these the ice tower low profile plus thinking it's another version of the ice tower. It's actually a separate product. It's called the low profile plus, but they're both made by the same people, 52 pots. So anyway, this is a low profile plus. Now it's very easy to install because these clips go right on there. You don't need to bend them like you do with that piece of shit argon. Uh, so hopefully for this thing's sake and for ours, it will perform a little bit better than the argon did. And uh, we'll find out here soon. So let's plug it in and see what happens. So this is exactly what I hoped to see on this test, okay? So right now we're at 68 degrees in the VR temp. That is eight degrees cooler than in stock configuration. We're also at 51 degrees on the ASIC, which is 20 degrees cooler, 20 degrees Celsius cooler than the stock configuration with the Dark Horse heatsink. This is a phenomenal upgrade. And personally, I think it looks better too. I love the pipes that kind of sweep over. It's got this very cyberpunk aesthetic to it and it works phenomenally. I bet you could overclock this thing to the moon and uh, you could probably get a thousand terahashes out of this thing with the ice tower because it's just it just keeps getting cooler. I don't know how. Uh, 50.4, the temperature's actually just continuing to drop, but the VR temp is staying about the same. 68, that's great on the VR. We're now down to 50 degrees, so 21 degrees cooler almost. 21 degrees, I'm speechless. The winner on this test, it was an absolute blowout. It was a, there was no contest here. The Argon sucked. I don't know, again, what the deal was. I tried everything. I screwed around with it for literally hours. Uh, trying every configuration, unscrewing it, turning it, screwing it back in, flipping the fans around, trying shims, trying no shims, removing the shims and replacing them in a different orientation. None of it worked. The ice tower, first time, plug it in, and we're seeing these crazy, we're 20 degrees cooler now, folks, on the ASIC chips. Those things are nice and cool. We are overclock approved. This thing is awesome. That's all I got to say. This thing is the uh, is absolutely the winner. The Low Profile Plus is the absolute best mod you can possibly get for a Bitaxe Gamma. It's better than anything else I have tested. It looks great. It's easy to install. What more is there to say? So I'm not going to include any information below in the description about the Argon because you don't want it. It's a piece of junk. What you want is a Low Profile Plus. So I'll include a link to that on Amazon if you want to pick one up. It was like 20 bucks, very cheap. And I will also include a link to the STL files so you can 3D print the adapters that you're going to need to attach this thing to your board. And of course, I'll include an Amazon link to the fan I used in case you, you know, you aren't sure which one to get. Anyway, that concludes our test, folks. Argon guys, people who passionately uh, tried to argue for the Argon. I don't know what you're thinking. Maybe you're, you're smoking the funny stuff. I, I don't know what the deal is. But the Low Profile Plus is the king of mods. There's nothing else to say. That's just, that's just the way it is. So that's all I got for today, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in and for the support of the channel. Tune in next time. Who knows what we'll do? Maybe we'll smash more Argons with a hammer. Maybe we'll test some more mods. Who knows? It could be anything here in the Carboos Mining Lab. So that's all I got for today. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you next time.